Hello again everyone, thanks for joining this video on semi-conservative replication of DNA. This topic is all about how our DNA replicates itself to allow our cells to mitotically divide. This topic is a crucial part of the A-level syllabus and also necessary for units 10 and 11 on the BTEC Applied Science. So that's the Biological Molecules Unit and the Genetics Unit. Before any form of cell division takes place, the cell must double its DNA. It does this by a process called DNA replication. DNA replication occurs during interphase of the cell cycle at an astounding rate. As many as 4,000 nucleotides per second are replicated. This explains how bacterial cells with as many as 4 million nucleotides can complete a cell cycle in about 20 minutes. The process ensures that each resulting cell receives a complete set of genes from the original cell. There are three stages to semi-conservative replication. The first stage is where DNA unwinds from its double helix structure in small bubbles in different locations of the DNA. The second is the making of new strands. And the third is a rewinding of the DNA molecule. The entire process needs two very important enzymes, DNA helicase, which has the role of breaking the hydrogen bonds between the bases, and DNA polymerase, which joins two nucleotides together on new strands. I will touch on both of these later in the video, but first I want to go through the process of replication. So with the first stage, we have the unwinding of the DNA molecule. You know that a normal chromosome here exists of an unreplicated DNA molecule. Before cell division, this long molecule of double-stranded DNA has to be replicated. So if we zoom into one part of the chromosome, we would see this double-stranded DNA section. And if we zoom in further, we would see where the DNA would become unwound. This yellow triangle represents DNA helicase. The DNA molecule first becomes untwisted and separated. I use the analogy of a zip to illustrate this point to students. Imagine a zip on your clothing that is undone so the two parts of the clothes separate like on a hoodie or a jacket. Well, that's exactly how this unzipping of DNA works by DNA helicase. That's the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction. The formation of new DNA is carried out mostly by an enzyme complex called DNA polymerase. So here we've got the DNA helicase that's kind of unzipped that particular part of the DNA molecule. The DNA polymerase will attach onto the DNA. And if we just zoom in to these areas, we would see the exposed bases just like that. DNA polymerase catalyzes the condensation reaction that joins adjacent nucleotides. The strand is synthesized in the 5' prime to the 3' prime direction with the polymerase moving from the 3' prime to the 5' prime direction along the strand it is reading. Thus, the nucleotides are assembled in a continuous fashion on one strand, but in short fragments on another strand. These fragments are later joined by an enzyme to form one continuous length. The diagram here simply shows you, if we zoom in, the new strand forming with the complementary bases. Each of the two new double helix DNA molecules has one strand of the original DNA and one strand of the newly synthesized strand. The two DNA molecules rewind into their double helix shape again, which is what you can see on that diagram there. This is why we say DNA replication is semi-conservative, with each new double helix containing one parent strand and one daughter strand. The new chromosome that you can see on the bottom right there will have twice as much DNA as the non-replicated chromosome that we saw right at the beginning of this video. And this particular chromosome will now appear as two chromatids joined by a centromere. Some of you might struggle with writing this process down, especially with knowing which key terms to use. And so I've added this to my video so you can pause it at this stage and copy it down for your notes. The keywords are highlighted for you in colour so that you know that they're important to mention. Something which I've not mentioned in this process is that ATP is required to activate the nucleotide, so it is worth knowing that. The nucleotides that are present in the cell are present as deoxynucleoside triphosphates, which are hydrolyzed, and when they're hydrolyzed, they provide energy for placing the nucleotide into the new strand. To be honest, you don't need to know it to that level of detail. As long as you put down the energy is needed to activate the free nucleotides, then that's enough for the exam. Earlier, I mentioned the importance of enzymes. So I mentioned two enzymes, DNA helicase and DNA polymerase. Well, there are also different polymerases that would do 
a similar sort of job as part of the process. Again, these enzymes you may come across in the exams or in textbooks, but the main two that you need to know about are DNA helicase and DNA polymerase. Now, DNA replication involves lots of enzyme control steps, and as DNA is replicated, enzymes basically proofread it and correct mistakes. During replication of the DNA, a mistake is made once every 100,000 or so nucleotides replicated. These mistakes are corrected in two ways. A process called proofreading and a second process called mismatch repair, which occurs after replication. The polymerase enzyme can only work in one direction. So when a new strand is constructed, it's constructed as a continuous length and the other strand is made in shorter segments to be later joined together. So these enzymes have their different functions as part of DNA replication. You can see over here that RNA polymerase will synthesize short RNA primers, which are later removed. DNA polymerase will add the nucleotide and when we talk about short segments being made, it's DNA ligase that will join the neighboring shorter fragments together. Again, no need to kind of mention this in an exam. The main points to mention are the ones that were on the previous slide with the word description of what happens as part of semi-conservative replication. So I know that was a short video, guys, but I hope that was helpful. I don't want to bang on for ages about stuff like this because it, there is no need to overcomplicate the matter. If you've got any questions, then please comment below this video. But for now, thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you soon. Bye.